Hi, everyone. We're here with Dr. Gladys McGarry, considered the mother of holistic medicine. And we're in her lovely garden with St. Francis over her shoulder with some celebratory balloons here. And we're kicking off a series of conversations with Dr. Gladys. So send your questions in and we'll see what Dr. Gladys has to say about whatever's on your heart and in your mind right now. Welcome, Dr. Gladys. Oh, I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> We're the honored ones, I think. We're looking here to Dr. Gladys to simply share her words of wisdom with us so that we can continue to apply these to our everyday lives. Everything from pre-birth to birth to pregnancy throughout life and also how to live an abundant life because this woman has lived it all. That's for sure. Thank you, Dr. Gladys. I'm going to sip. I'm going to step away so you can focus on this beautiful, uh, this beautiful woman as she she shares whatever is on her heart. <laughs> well, Dr. Gladys, so I hope that uh, that whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, whatever that noise is that it's in our background, we're able to take care of it. So um, Dr. Gladys, there's a lot of trial and tribulation going on right now on the planet. And it has to do with the wars that are, there's a, currently a war in the Ukraine and uh, that's on a lot of people's heart. There've been many wars that you have lived through um, Absolutely. And so what kinds of tips or, you know, it seems so trite to call them trip tips, but what, what can we learn from your experience that would help us get through really this trauma that we are all experiencing no matter where we live? Well, you know, your father and mother were such good examples of what I call living medicine. It's a concept that basically says that we we have a choice we have a choice globally we have a choice definitely personally individually to keep our eye and our um, thoughts either on the horribly uh, dark side of life or on the light side of life now that's not an easy thing to just say, well, today I'm gonna to be on the light side of life. It's because the dark side comes in, in, including some noises that you don't want. So it's the, um, it's, it's our choice, however, moment by moment, day by day, to choose what, where our energy is going to go, what we're going to really, um, look for because if we don't look for the light it's it's not there and in right along with that um have you ever gone down to the the Carlsbad caverns into the car i i had a really interesting experience we went down the into the cavern way down into the heart of the earth and the guard, the guide who was taking us around turned off all the lights. And there was a darkness there that was palpable. It was almost like black velvet. It was so dark. And then he lit one match and it lit up the whole place. And to me, that has been a um, symbol of um, how important it is for light to overcome darkness. It won't light up the, you know, it doesn't change it. But what it does do is give us another perspective, another way of looking at things. When you're in the dark, you can't see anything. I mean, that that darkness is can be that dark. And I think that, that when a war comes onto the earth, now I live, I started medical school on, uh, well, I, I went into medical school in September of uh, 41, 1941. And the war started in December. So my whole medical training was war. And it was amazing because we learned all kinds of things. Penicillin was discovered, sulfa drugs, uh, steroids, 
all those ways of doing things and having mechanical uh, procedures and so on. Amazing things happened during that where, where we were not only fighting a war against um, uh, the Nazis, but we were learning how to continue the war, which the world of medicine has felt that it needs, which is a war against disease. So with birthing, we uh, women were given twilight sleep. And now, now I, I mean to tell you, for my first two babies, I had twilight sleep. For my first one, my son, it was 24 hours before I knew I had a son. So the, the idea was to take away the pain. Well, of course, you don't really take away the pain. You go through whatever it is, but you don't remember it. Is and, that what, what, what is twilight sleep? Oh, it's scopolamine. It's, it's, oh, it's a, a, a drug. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, and we did all we, we tried to make the whole area of birth sterile, which is a stupid idea. <laughs> but we uh, shaved the mother's legs from the knees up to the umbilicus and gave her an enema so that this would be as sterile. I mean, as, as unnatural as possible. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, but the idea was that we were keep, keeping it so clean, so sterile, as we, we thought we were doing all of it. Almost so, as if birth is dirty. Oh, oh sure. You know. And, um, and then, since the mother wasn't unable to con contribute anything in the way of her involvement with this, we used forceps and forceps deliveries. I, I was really good at it. I learned how to do those forceps. I could do uh, after in a breech baby, the after coming head and all of that. And that was considered the way in which it should be done. So it, it was, um, the war was on, we did the things, the war. but the sad thing for me was that when the war was over, these procedures continued. I, in 1970s, I was, um, I had a young uh, resident, OBGYN resident from uh, University of Cincinnati going, doing rounds with me. And, and we were going, I, we went to, to a hospital birth and uh, I had the maybe the lady involved in the whole thing and we pushed the baby out and had a, you know, the whole thing. When I was taking him home, he said, that's the first spontaneous delivery I have seen without forceps. So even in that, the seventies, we had a war going on against the pain of childbirth. So, it was um, it's one of the reasons I started the whole baby buggy program. One of the reasons I spent 12 years till we got husbands in the delivery room. Because <laughs> when you have the husband in the delivery room, you, the woman's got some support. She's got somebody there who's going to be with her. And no matter how much they don't want to, <laughs> They're involved in this process, yeah. and and it's, it's great... almost an energetic support, really. Huh? It's a like a foundation that it, oh, given. absolutely, actually, it started the whole thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, when I was doing home deliveries, um, no, I wasn't delivering the babies. When I was helping mothers birth their babies. I'm trying to yeah, you, remind us why you don't use the term delivery. Yeah, we, we deliver pizzas and we deliver speeches. We don't deliver be babies. Mothers birth babies. And uh -huh. so I'm trying to, you know, to learn that we didn't, I didn't do any deliveries, forceps or not forceps. That's not what. But when, when um, I had a thought in that spot. Anyway, the, the whole uh, concept of birthing um, 
changes. No, no, it doesn't change. There's a different perspective when a birth is done in the home or in a birthing center where the whole atmosphere is one of welcoming this baby. This is, some, this is something that is understood and you do everything that you can to, to eliminate the fear and allow the mother and the father to be part of the whole. It, it's a totally different process. The one person that I would have trouble with in the birthing room when I'm working with, hello balloon, <laughs> <laughs> it was the mother, the, 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 the mother, the mother, mother. Who, oh, the mother of the woman giving oh, birth, giving birth. Let me take care. She would get all caught up with the pain that her daughter was going through, and. Um, was no help. So it was a, a um, now I, I, there were times that I, it was okay to have the mother there, but there were times that I would have to ask her to leave or ask her to please sit in the corner and knit or do something, you know, because it, it um, and it's understandable. When your kid hurts, you hurt. And so the, <laughs> when the child was, in labor, going through pain, the mother, and the mother didn't have anything to do. So you need, if she was doing the birthing herself, like I uh, helped my daughter do, birth their babies, and, and I, you know, it, the, then you know what you're doing and you, you're involved in it and there's something. Mm -hmm. But um, so it was an interesting time and so, Dr. Gladys, you have such vast experience, for goodness sake. Uh, there's so many questions that we could ask here. You have lived through these the war times. And um, is there a way that we can help um, energetically something in a non-local way, those that are actually experiencing this trauma right now? I'm thinking of babies that are being born oh, in the underground something? in the underground subway systems and things like that right now in the Ukraine. Absolutely, in particular. absolutely. The trauma that's being <clears throat> perpetrated. <clears throat> are there ways that we can help alleviate that trauma in some way? Or what do you suggest with your... Well, you know, this has been true since the beginning of time and um which part do you mean the the fact that there's been war yeah on the light and darkness that has been that war has been going on since the beginning of time and i think what we can do for any aspect of of what's of life on this planet is to live our lives in such a way that what's offered to us, we take and do with it in the light or in darkness. And um, I have a, 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 I had a Indian sister who, uh, I'm not, now this is back uh, 1922, three probably that she was born. Um, my aunt was in South India she, as a, a doctor, missionary doctor. And um, the mill workers were going to work early one morning. And as they came across, walked past a, a cactus patch, they heard something that sounded like a baby or what, they didn't know what it was. So they put some boards down and went into the cactus and they found a newborn baby. They picked her up and took her to the police. Well, the police didn't want her. And so they took her to the mission and my aunt took her and it took two hours to take the cactus thorns out of her little body. <clears throat> and uh, then she had pneumonia, but she nursed her through that. And then after, a few months, she brought her up to where we were in North India, and um, she became my little sister, Dorcas. Now, the reason she was in the cactus patch was because 
her parents wanted a boy and they had a girl. And that happened a lot. Now, the reason I'm telling this story is that this kind of thing, the, the dark forces have been, whatever they are, have been working in people's lives for e since the beginning of time. And I think our job is to personally look at what, what we're doing individually. I was blessed to be there so that I could take Dorcas into my arms. Well, we're not in a position now to take the people from, but some people are. And if they're not, we can pray for them. We can send them what we can, and we can do what we can to uh, bring more light and 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 save them. The whole democratic concept is is really really important. If we don't, we're back right down where you're throwing your baby away because she's a girl. You know, oh, it's it's um, so you're we've saying... come a long ways. Okay, you that's know. important then to to celebrate, and that actually that's important for many of us to know, who feel like uh, things have just spiraled out of control. So they're getting worse. Well, right? and when right, if we don't have the one hundred years right. perspective, for example, if our perspective is twenty years or forty years, then we have. Um, uh, it's wonderful to hear that things are have gotten better in your perspective. So thank you. Oh, that's true, because, you know, <clears throat> whatever is happening in the world, women now are able to vote. Can you believe yes, it? <laughs> yes, yes. I think a lot of there are a lot of people who were not living in those days that don't understand how um, how um, I don't want to say muted. Oh, um, oh we were, we well, had to, were, you know, yes. we had to wear masks. The reason this whole mask thing has been such a hot problem for men has been that, you know, they had to do this. But women have lived like this and in parts of the world still are. The only part that you see is the eyes. So we're, but the, not a huge part. Well, yeah, there are a lot of people, a lot of women who are still in that situation. However, the ones of us who have the honor and the privilege and the responsibility to stand up and claim our place in the world, claim our voice in the world, and look towards the whole um, process of bringing more light into this world. It, it's if we can really understand that that little candle it, or that little match can do that to the candle in the cavern in the cavern yeah if it that we can be that is what you're telling that's us that's right mm -hmm. no matter if, where we are know, on the planet no matter where we are or what's going on in the planet if we know that there's some dark some terrible things happening What's happening in the Ukraine is absolutely terrible. And um, I think it's very much our responsibility and our privilege to reach out to them however we can. It, 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 just whatever it is that we have, whether it's a prayer, whether it's a song, whether it's whatever it is that we can honestly with uh, within our hearts bring for us and say i i bring you this because we, it, love always overcomes hate love always does it doesn't seem like it because the hate is can be very strong but you know the opposite of hate uh, of love is not hate it's indifference so, so it's not, I've heard before and there, uh, that the opposite of love is fear, but you're actually saying the opposite of love is indifference. That's quite something. What yeah. do you mean by that? I mean, if you don't care, I do, 
of what's going on around the world or if you don't care about what's happening to girls in uh, you know around the world if you don't care about democracy for crying out loud if you just are going to sit back and say oh well i've got it okay or whatever if you're indifferent to what's actually happening you're contributing to it i mean that makes me sad yeah really sad because um yeah. it's so important that we claim our lives and claim what it is that we can do we can't do everything we ha we but we can do what we can do we have to be looking for it we have to be looking for the light and um uh that's why if if not if when when we find ourselves um in a really dark place and it happens to all of us sometimes sometimes there's a battle that needs to go on within our own being and fortunately now we uh, for a lot of us there is counseling available and there are ways of looking at at what's happening if we, we if we can look for that, for help for that, and, and it's available for those of us who are living in a, in a situation where that's available, but, but we need to look for it. If we don't, then we're being indifferent to the, pro, to the whole process of suffering that it is that we're dealing with. I, I mean, when, when your mother and dad went to Europe, and they sent me a piece of the Berlin Wall. When and it came down, it, when, yes. When, when it came down, mm -hmm. I have it on my wall, you know, that framed it on my wall. That is a, a, a huge statement that we, when they accepted that and realized what was happening, I accepted it and realized what happening and framed it and put it on my wall, made a statement that the falling of the Berlin Wall was a huge step forward for not just democracy, but for human, humankind. Mm -hmm. And so when we take these uh, little things, you know, and realize that the things that we do with love and involvement in furthering the uh, the awakening consciousness of the true human mm -hmm. on this planet. Mm -hmm. That is where we, we can all work. I mean, there isn't one of us that can't do something mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. with that. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And you know what? The, the noise stopped. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we had noise in the background mm. for most of this conversation. So we'll take mm. care of that. That's Drinking okay, Dr. Kovitz. <laughs> and so this has been one of the installments of Conversations with Dr. Gladys. We look forward to some more, Dr. Gladys. And thank you for your wisdom. We don't know when. We don't know what but it will be <laughs> it will be it will be yeah thank you and if you would like to send in some questions for dr gladys to answer in these conversations with dr gladys please reply to the email below or if you see this on youtube feel free to comment in the comments and dr gladys will look at those questions and and may answer some of them on her next in our next conversation with dr gladys thank you so much dr gladys Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>